Right, so guys, we're looking at chapter 2 in your detailed pack of notes. Alright, main thing there in chapter 2 that we're looking at are two types of transactions. Okay, let's think about all the amounts that you receive from your employer. I want you guys to just, you know, tell me what amounts you guys receive. Salary, yep. Bonus, yep. Commission. Overtime, travel allowance, fringe benefits, okay, you've just that like, you know, let me just shut this down. Okay, it's just going for too long, fringe benefits, okay. All right, <coughs> so two types of transactions that you'll see. One is a cash payment and the other is non-cash. Make sense? So, salary, overtime, bonus, cash allowances, cash, all right, and then fringe benefits other than cash. Okay, cool. So we're looking at two types of payments, cash payments, non-cash payments. So if we're looking at cash payments, salary, everyone comfortable your salary goes into your taxable income calculation, right? So we've got salary, which is a fixed amount, and then you've got your variable amounts. Variable amounts, you've got bonus, uh, commission, overtime, that's a variable amount, okay? Those amounts similar to your salary are included in your taxable income, but the only difference between your salary and those types of amounts is they're only taxed when you actually receive it, okay? So have you guys, if you have received a bonus, have you noticed on the day you receive your bonus is the day you receive a extra payment? You guys notice that? Okay, if you haven't, probably your employer is doing it wrong. Okay, on the day that you receive your bonus, you have to get an extra payment because you only tax technically on that day. Does that make sense? Okay, your salary, they can give you your pay slip long before they pay your salary. Have you noticed that? Okay, so your cash payments, your salary, overtime bonus, that's included into your taxable income calculation. But now, <coughs> we have this concept of cash allowances, or allowances, call them, you know, call them cash allowances, allowances, right? What allowances do you guys know? Travel allowance, obviously. Cell phone allowance. What else? Assistance allowance. All right, cool. So, got a couple of allowances. Okay, so let's look at these allowances. These allowances basically have to be taxed. That's the general rule. Receive an allowance, it has to be taxed. Where's this allowance from? Your employer, right? So all amounts from your, from your employers are taxed. That's the general, general rule. However, when we're looking at these cash allowances, everyone comfortable, allowances are cash. You see the word allowance? No, it's cash. Okay? There are three types of allowances. Looks like SARS just loves three. Okay? Three types of allowances. Right? There's what we call a reimbursive allowance. Reimbursive. So, looking at page seven in your handwritten notes. So, reimbursive. We've got a reimbursive allowance. All right, we've got an allowance that can be reduced. We've got a reimbursive allowance, an allowance that can be reduced, and we've got all other. So those are the three types of allowances that we have. Reimbursive. All right, one that can be reduced and other. Okay, all other allowances are taxed at 100%, which is basically, actually, if you're looking at the way that Section 8 is written, right, it, it basically starts off by saying allowances are taxed, period, except if reimbursive or if they can be reduced. Does that make sense? So technically, I'm supposed to teach you other, 
before I teach you those other two texts. So all allowances are taxable except if reimbursed or if they can be reduced. So if you receive a cell phone allowance, cell phone allowance is 100% taxable. Make sense? Okay. You receive a cell phone allowance, 100% taxable. Now let me deal with those two um, types of exclusions, right? Exclusion number one, reimbursive. Okay, so a reimbursive allowance has three components. Three again. Okay, so three components. Component number one is you need an instruction. Okay, you need an instruction. Okay, so that's the first thing that you need. You need an instruction. You need to act on the instruction and you need to prove that instruction. Okay, so if it's a reimbursive allowance, those are the three things that you need. Instruction, uh, act on the instruction, prove the instruction. Okay, company gives you 10,000 rand. They entertain our clients, take them on the full Joburg experience. Okay, so you just determine what the full Joburg experience is. Obviously, 10,000 really does not give you full Joburg experience, but I'm just saying, take them on a full Joburg experience. Make sense? You take the 10,000 rand, take them all over the uh, beautiful city of Joburg, spend 10,000. Okay, so let's go through the requirements. Were you given an instruction? Yes. Entertain our clients and take them on a full Joburg experience. Make sense? Did you act on this instruction? Yes. You took them around the entire Joburg. All right, so you did act on the instruction. Number three is you need to prove that you've spent that amount. Okay, so you need receipts to prove that you have spent that amount. So in a case like this, 10,000 Rand is included in your taxable income calculation. 10,000 Rand is what? Excluded from your calculation. Nothing is taxed. Make sense? Okay, cool. So, let me give you another example. Another example, take them on a Jobic experience. Okay? Take, take them to the daily Bible corner, buy them a bunny chow, all right, spend a hundred grand on them. Okay, let's go through this again. Instruction. Did you act? Can you prove? Spend how much? hundred grand. So 10,000 goes into your calculation. You can only prove how much? A hundred, nine thousand. 900 taxed in your taxable income calculation. Does this make sense? Okay. All right. Or alternatively, 10,000 Rand goes into your calculation. Right? You take the 9,900 change, you give it back to the company. How much can you prove? 9,900 in refund. Make sense? Minus the hundred rand that you spent, how much is taxed in your account? Okay, so number one, reimbursive allowance. And guys, how do you identify the reimbursive allowance in the exam? They'll tell you. How simple is that? They'll say, so and so received a reimbursive allowance of 300 rand. 300 goes in, 300 goes out, done. Cool. Okay, so that's number one, reimbursive allowance. Number two, an allowance that can be reduced. An allowance that can be reduced. Two allowances that you guys need to know that can be reduced, okay? Technically, there are more than two. However, in your syllabus, only two examinable. Number one is subsistence allowance. Number one, subsistence allowance. Number two is a 